Hey friends, Rubber Green Girl again. Thanks for joining me. Today I want to talk to you about what you can grow in the shade. You know, conventional gardening wisdom tells you you have to plant everything in the full sun. And I haven't actually found that to be true. Um, there are spots in my garden, both in my backyard garden and my front yard garden, that get shaded. And I actually found out that there are certain crops, certain things that we can grow in those areas that actually grow better. And so I've done a lot of experimenting. Some stuff grows better, some stuff grows about the same, whether it's in full sun or not. And then there are a few things that you can get by planting in, you know, shady areas if you really want to grow them there. And they do well, um, but less well than they would in the sunny areas. But if you really wanted to grow them, you still could, um, even in the shady areas. But, um, so let me go ahead and uh, get started with my list of things. I actually broke it down into my three lists and those three categories. Um, of what you can grow in the shade and then there are a couple of uh, excuse me a couple other um, issues that we have with the shade it's not just the amount of sunshine that it gets but you know a few other things that come with that um, the second thing would be watering um, when you're watering your plants in the shade you're going to want to make sure you water them a little bit less because um, it doesn't dry out as well as it does in the shade. So I would say somewhere between 50 and 75% as much water as you would normally give them, give your plants in the shade that amount of water. Um, you know, so just, just cut it back a little bit from what you would normally. Sometimes this can be water them every other day. Sometimes it's just give them water for a little bit less time than you would the others. Um, but yeah, do be careful not to overwater them. And then the other thing, um, other than the amount of sun that they get, the other problem that they can have is not germinating. So. The way that I get around this is if I'm going to be planting stuff in the garden beds, um, direct seed, if I'm going to be doing that, I'll do it really early in the year before the leaves get their, their leaf, well, the trees get their leaves yet. And then you can get lots of sunshine and then the heat can warm the soil and then they can actually germinate better. Um, another way to do it would be if I'm not planting something really early, you know, like the cool weather crops and things like that. As you'll see in the list, most of the things that can grow there are a lot of cool weather crops, but if I'm not going to be planting something like that, then what I'll do is just transplant. I'll start stuff in the greenhouse and then when, you know, they sprout and they start to grow and everything, then I'll transplant them in there and then I don't have to worry about the soil being warm enough to cause them to germinate. So there are the first two things I wanted to get out of the way and then the third thing is, you know, the sun and, you know, how they actually grow the rest of the time uh, being in the shade. So the first one is my list of plants that I believe do better in the sun. This was sort of an accident. I planted a bunch of things and, um, well, peas specifically, which is on this list, um, you know, whenever I would put them in the sun, the sun would get, you know, strong in the summertime, you know, and then it would basically kill them. It would fry them. And then it was, when I started it earlier, you know, to make sure I had enough time before the sun started frying them, then it was too early and there would still be frost and things and, you know, it would just be too cold. So the time frame that we have here in Colorado between when the frost start and when the heat really sets in is such a short amount of time. This is like skips almost. And then it kind of goes back and forth for a little while. Our spring is like warm and then freezing, warm and then freezing. Um, it just makes it really difficult to try to garden in that kind of weather. So the, the shade has really been helpful to me because then instead of, you know, the shade killing my plants, it helps them because then it can kind of keep them from getting too warm in the summer sun. So here are my list of plants that I believe do better in the shade than they do in the sun. And this is part shade, something that's going to get like dappled shade, like under a tree or something like that. Not next to like a building or a fence where it gets full shade all day long. So dappled shade, here's what I believe that you can plant garden-wise in your garden. Uh, lettuce, spinach, peas, like I mentioned earlier, pak choy, mustard greens, and celery. All of those things. If I don't plant them in the sun, they'll bolt, they'll dry out in the sun, you know, it'll get too hot, and then it'll kill the plants and things like that. Those are all cool weather crops, and they, they prefer the cool weather, and so the shade has really helped a lot. So here's my list number two. And this is the stuff that doesn't necessarily do better, but it does, in my opinion, equally well. Things that still need at least a good dappled shade, you know, just like I mentioned earlier. Um, and it still does pretty well, so I would highly recommend trying it if that's what you have. So arugula, green onions, parsley, mint, collard greens, endive, cress, kohlrabi, cilantro, and coriander, which is the same plant, it's just coriander's the seed. Uh, Swiss chard, kale, dill, lemon balm, and chives. So I have a lot of those things in like 
my herb garden, which is actually next to a peach tree and things like that. A lot of them are herbs. Um, or in the garden beds I have, when I'm going to actually plant them, I'll make sure to choose these types of ones that are going to be in the most shady areas. So it really works out well. I think all of us have a little bit of shade somewhere, even if we don't have, you know, issues like I have with, you know, the weather being flip-floppy. Um, we all have areas in the garden that are going to get shady, so we can choose these types of plants to go in those areas. Okay, and then the last one is going to be my list number three, and these are going to be the plants that do okay in the shade, but there's definitely going to be some, um, like, like reduction in how much they're going to be able to produce. They still can grow in the shade, um, you just won't get maybe as many of them. They'll be a little bit sad that you've put them there, um, but they can still do it. So if you have really limited amounts of shade, or excuse me, sunny areas, and you really want to grow a lot of different crops, then maybe you could try putting some of these in the shade, just knowing that they're going to be maybe a little bit less um, productive as they would normally be. So there we go. Uh, list number three, strawberries, beans, beets, cabbage, broccoli, garlic, thyme, basil, carrots, leeks, radishes, and turnips. And I would even add to this little um, tomatoes and peppers and things like that. You could even put those in there because the bigger tomatoes and bigger peppers need more sun in order to ripen. A smaller variety like a cherry tomato or a jelly bean or something like that. Or when it comes to peppers, smaller peppers like those little sweet peppers instead of like big like green ones and things like that. If you choose the smaller type varieties, they will do better for you if you choose to put them in some sort of a dappled sun area. Of course, all of those things on that list number three are going to do better in full sun than they would in the shady area, but they can be done in those shady areas too. So, um, as you can see, there was a lot. There was a lot of things that we could still plant in the shade. And before I actually found out all this, I thought that this whole area in my front yard was a waste, you know? It was just destined to be nothing but grass and annoying to have to try to mow and all this stuff. And when I found out there was all these things that did really well in the shade, I converted the whole front yard of my garden, or my yard, to a garden. And many of the areas are in shade and I really enjoy it. It really has been working out very well. And some of the areas are pretty sunny, some of them are more shady, and so I just make sure to put the right plants in the right spot so that they'll all be happy and give the ones that like the sun the more sunny areas and then the ones that can handle more shade or even prefer it, I have been really happy about that. You know, you put them underneath the tree. And as an added benefit, you know, just kind of as an off topic here, um, sometimes when we get late snows, which we do here in Colorado, it always seems to snow in late April, sometimes even early May. The stuff that I've planted underneath the tree also seems to get less of the snow on it, so it's even happier then too. So it's not just the fact that it's shaded from the summer sun that's going to scorch it in two weeks after that snowstorm. It's also, you know, gets protection from hard rain and hail and stuff like that. So it's actually been really good. So there you go. There's my list of things you can garden in the shade and just the different, you know, challenges you have and how to overcome them. So I hope you found this video helpful and we'll see you next time.